to the Hangar 9 F4U Corsair modification video part 2. Let's go ahead and get the video started by showing you the fuselage and talking about the modifications that were done. The first area we're going to talk about is the forward cowling. Um, what I've elected to do is I installed four blocks in, in addition to the four that are already on there to give that cowling its extra support and contour that you're going to need. Okay, moving to the midsection. Um, on the middle of the fuselage here, this was originally where the, obviously your uh, cockpit area is. We've removed the floor. The original uh, model had a floor there. What I've done is taken that out. I've opened this area up, all right? And, what I, and the reason for that is there's going to be a scale cockpit installed. Also, if you notice, there's where our rudder servo was relocated. And we're going to show you the tail feathers here in a minute and talk about that. But anyway, there's where the tail uh, rudder servo is relocated. We got the rod hooked up. It was all complete. Very simple to do. Okay, now let's go ahead and talk about why we opened this up. This is another F4U cockpit installation kit that I had to build. It comes with flat sheets of this plastic here. You have to cut everything out, put it together, put the decals, and paint it. And this is what it looks like when it's complete. And there you go. It's pretty accurate. For the um, F4U Corsair, as you can see, it's going to look really nice, make it, give it some scale. And also, it comes with a real nice instrumentation panel. I had to also paint and do up. That's going to set in there. We're going to have our pilot figure. And it's already pre-cut, and it fits up through the bottom, sits in here real nice. I've already, you know, did that. Okay, so that's all done. We'll kind of show you what it looks like here while we're at it. Let's just kind of pop it up. It's going to go up through the bottom here, just like this. All right. And obviously you're going to um, get it in place here for you guys. There you go. Slide that up. And these lips are going to just, it's going to set in just like this. You're going to set the lips in, glue it in. This is going to set in. Then your instrument is going to come up through the bottom and go here. That's basically it. That's what it's going to look like when it's installed. So I figured I'd show you that. Um, there are no directions for that. I kind of just had to figure it out on my own. Figure out what cock what other model, what another f 4 u cockpit would fit in here. I got it done. It looks great. I'm really excited about that. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and move back to the tail. We're going to show you what we've done to the tail that's unique. Obviously, as you can see, we got the vertical stabilizer installed, horizontal stabilizer installed, and your filler piece in here for your rudder. Here's your rudder control rod right here, and that's a one-piece item that hooks to your tail wheel that that servo I showed you earlier runs. So one servo is going to run those both. Okay, let's talk about the tail wheel assembly. This is a tail wheel assembly that I picked up uh, at your local hobby store. I modified it. This is not what comes from comes with the kit. I, I wanted to look. I wanted it to look more scale. I also installed the doors to give it some scale as well. All right, now this area here, while we're at it, this is where the original servo was located. Obviously, we covered it with balsa, filled the hole up, and it's it's uh, it came out real nice, as you can see. All right, now, on to the uh, tail here, I should say, onto the elevators. Now, this was a, an area that required a lot of work. What we had to do is we had to gain access in here. I had to figure out how to install these servos, got them installed, closed up the panel, there you go. Initially, that's not how they were installed. The servo was sticking way out, and again, they had one servo controlling your elevators. I went with two. There it is. There's the installation of both the left and the right-hand um, elevator servos came out great. It's going to look really streamlined and give it a nice profile. You won't even be able to see them because they're right underneath your horizontal stabilizer as the model sitting on the ground. So it really came out great. I'm really happy uh, with this. This fuselage is ready to be covered along with the wing in the previous video. And we're going to go ahead and do that here in the next couple of weeks. All right, now the next area we're going to talk about that required modification is the engine area. This is the cowling for the Hangar, for the hangar 9 F4U Corsair. I just had to open up the areas for the uh, valve covers of the Sato 170. All right, those came out real nice. And this is the exhaust port for the uh, Kalo um, exhaust system that I have installed. So that's basically done. It just slides right over, slides right over, fits real nice. All right, on the 170, I thought I'd share this with you guys. This is the Kalo. Um, exhaust system that fits the Sato 170. It collects all the cylinders exhaust gases and dumps them out in one location here and that's going to be at the bottom of the fuselage 
here, coming out of this hole, it'll stick out about that much. That is gonna sound great and look great. I'm really excited about that. We have our spinner here. It's already good to go with all our hardware, so we got our stuff for that. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the uh, covering process that I'm gonna be using. Okay, back here what you see is all that adhesives, all the materials, the covering instructions, and the paint codes. All right, this is basically your Stitz scale covering system from FNM Enterprises. These are your instructions. Here's all your glues and adhesives, your covering, and your uh, paint chart. This particular covering, as you can see, is from SIG. It's coverall, and it's heat shrinkable. This is what you're going to use to cut out the shape of the area you're going to cover. After you have it uh, on the model and where you need it to be, you're going to use the poly tack system to tack it in place, let it dry, then you're going to shrink the material. After you have the material shrunk down, it's all tight and it's where you need to be. You might have to come back and reapply some of this stuff. Then you're going to go over it. You're going to go over it with the poly brush. That's going to adhere to the wood. It's going to, it's going to wick through the uh, material, the covering, and go onto your into your balsa, and it's going to harden. So it's going to give you that hardened finish you need. After that dries, you're going to come back and you're going to coat that covering, fill in all those grains with the uh, feathering coat. You're going to put three or four coats of this on, sand it to, to where it's desirable, to where you like it, and then this is your polyfiber paint right here. Polytac polyfiber paint. Here's the paint chart. Here's all the colors that they offer. I'm going to be using the Insignia Blue. The whole model is going to be painted Insignia Blue, F4U Corsair color. Uh, I'll surprise you with what squadron we're going to use and markings on there. So anyway, that's basically it, guys. I want to thank everybody for watching the video. Stay tuned for... Uh, the preview because when we get this all together it's going to be about a couple weeks we've got to get it covered painted i'll show you what the model looks like so anyway stay tuned appreciate everyone watching subscribe comment rating hey it's great you guys have been wonderful so stay tuned and again thanks for watching tickerman rc videos